All right, we're back, and we're looking at moments of inertia. And this one, I just want to do a, a short little how-to video on something we call the parallel axis theorem. This is a neat little trick to trade, I guess you could say. <laughs> nice little theorem that allows you to very quickly and easily find uh, moments of inertia when your axis of rotation is in weird places for an object. And by that I mean uh, we're, we're really using this when your axis of rotation is not at the center of mass of the object. Uh, for example, if, if you were to take a disc and spin it instead of around its center, what if you spun it around a point on its edge, or, or just like drilled a hole in a place anywhere else in the disc other than the center? Um, what would the moment of inertia be? Because if that disc is going to rotate around that, that new axis of rotation, uh, the inertia becomes an essential part of this. So this parallel axis theorem is a, a quick and easy way of doing it. And so I just wanted to give a, a, an example or two of what I mean by it. Okay, the, the theorem itself is basically saying that the moment of inertia at uh, you know, when your axis rotation is anywhere other than the center of mass, is the inertia when the axis is the center of mass, plus a quantity um, that the mass of the object times little d squared. Okay, now th this little d is kind of the key. That That's simply the distance from the center of mass to the location of the new axis of rotation. So for example, if we took a disc, and if, if we drilled a hole where this X is over here, and that's the point that we're going to spin the disc around, what would, what would the moment of inertia be? Well, in this case, it would simply be the inertia at the center of mass, which is 1 half mR squared, that's normal inertia for a disc, but then we're going to take the uh, the mass of the disk and multiply it by that d squared, wherever that distance happens to be. And that's it. That's the trick. <laughs> and that would be the new inertia. If the axis of rotation, let's say, happened to be instead of in the body of the disk, what if it happened to be at the edge of the disk? Okay, so now the distance from the center of mass to that new point would be the, the radius of the disk. And so all of a sudden you'd have 1 half mr squared, which is the moment of inertia around the center of mass, plus the mass of the disk times that distance squared, which is r squared. So that now you're talking about 3 halves mr squared. You don't have to do any integration. You don't have to do anything difficult. It's just this extra term that we're adding on. Now this, this actually brings up an interesting point if you're talking about sticks. Now we're, we're used to doing the integrals and changing the, the limits of integration, the bounds. Um, okay, so we're, you know, we're used to saying if, if the uh, axis rotation is right at the center, we know what that answer is. We've used it a lot. It's 1 12th, the mass of the stick times L squared. Okay. But what if instead of spinning it um, at that location, what if you were to spin it around one of the ends? Okay. Well, the parallel axis theorem says, well, we don't have to set up the integral. We could just say we're going to take the the moment of inertia around the center of mass, 1 12th ml squared. We're going to add on the mass of the stick times little d squared. Well, in this case, what would that be? That would be half the length of the stick squared. Let's see what you get. Uh, that's going to be 1 4th ml squared that we're adding on. And let's see, 1 12th plus 1 4th, and 1 4th is the same as 3 12th. 
that's going to be 4 twelfths, which is 1 third ml squared. And that's the answer that we've been getting if we used um, the, the integral. Okay, so this is a, a quick and easy way to find inertias when your axis moves around. It's called the parallel axis theorem. And this is all it is. Okay. No integrals. I, I think you'll like it once you get the hang of it. So, um, yeah, feel free to use it if this makes sense to you. And uh, until next time, we'll see you later.